live from the jungle. Welcome to another episode of the Lionheart Podcast. We are doing NXT. This won't be long, so we're gonna, you know, just give y'all all, all a little short review on NXT. Um, the show was it was okay. I, I didn't think the show was, you know, better than what it's been in you know the previous weeks. This was actually my first time giving the show a and eh, it's alright. It wasn't, you know, all that to me for some reason. It, it just didn't. It just it, it just didn't have that. The matches just didn't seem all that to me for some reason. The only good thing about the show was a, a day with Tommy's and you know returning and Bobby Roode. That was it. And then Oscar yeah, she competed, like, but you know why? that was the majority you of the show. Why? You wanna know why it's on? What? It's because you're starting to get used to watching NXT now. You're getting used to. Oh it. no, I've gotten used and to it for a long time. Uh, it just this episode just wasn't mean, all of that. No, I just mean like. I well, okay. Why do you think we don't like Raw anymore? Like we used to, like you know, some Raws are I, right, you know, because we've seen them a lot. And I, you know. Yeah, some Raw, some be good, some be bad. Something like that. But uh, the first match of the show was the return of. Well, the first thing that happened was the return of Hideo with Tommy. He went against Sean Maluda. Now Sean Maluda is a part of the Cruiserweight Classic. He was the guy that botched that, you know, that somersault against uh, Kabushi. Well, Abushi, Kota Abushi, and he's also, uh, you know, related to the Usos and you know the Samoans or whatever. But um, they were pretty much raped him, and he dominated this match. Um, this man did his, you know, he did his signature moves, did the kick, and put him in the corner, and then did that running drop kick to the to the bottom buckle on the uh, top of uh Sean. Now that that low drop kick, that man killed him. That man kicked his face off when he hit that. Uh, you know, hit his comeback, the dragon screw takedown, and he hit the running knee, and that was it. You know. Yep. That man, you know, that ring rusting, he ain't show no type of ring rusting, nothing. That man, you know, he, like he performed better than what he did before. He's, you know, I hope he get that championship soon. Because I heard back I then. Like the new light beard, yes. I heard back then, um, he before Finn Balor got that push, he was supposed to have gotten that push instead of Finn Balor. But, um, you know, he got injured and all, and that pretty much messed his little, his spot up and stuff. But hopefully we'll see him face Joe for the championship, or maybe Shinsuke, if Shinsuke become champion in the future. But um, that was a uh, yeah, that match wasn't you know that, that match was just domination. But um, <clears throat> moving on, uh, they showed uh, you know what the artists of pain did the did to the American Alpha last week, well two weeks ago in NXT. Now we won't be seeing the American Alpha because they're on SmackDown, so I don't know if they're gonna come back and get their revenge against the artists of pain or what. But we may not see the American Alpha because they're on the main roster now, and the artists of pain they're probably just gonna be you know having these tag team matches against these jobbers or whatever, you know, most likely until they get to the, the top to the face of the champions and all, but typical stuff. Yep, LOL. Man, LOL, man. They, uh, Ooh, that American was the lag for right there. He was American right. now. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Oh, wow. American. Yep, and, uh, okay, now, they had a, it was an interview backstage uh, with, you know, the Revival with uh, Andrea DeMarco and she pretty much asked them was there any pressure on them and it was pretty much saying that si they're the best scientif scientifically they're better than all of, the, all of the tag teams they have you know, that's on NXT and then we saw TM61 and we saw Johnny Gargando and his partner they were like you know they were there and on uh, the revival they ended up challenging um, you know they ended up facing TM61 in the main event and um I'm gonna get into that later but anyway like uh, yeah, like um Apparently, yeah. in the promo, if I'm not mistaken, uh, TM61 they had asked uh, they had asked the revival if they yeah. wanted to have a match, and the revival pretty much they turned it down. But then when uh, what's the what's the Johnny Gargano and Tommaso? Uh, they didn't have a tag team. Uh, well, well, when they came up and they asked the revival, hey, revival, let's have a tag team title match. Then the revival was just like, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't do that because we already had a match between, you know, yeah. the other guys. So pretty much, they yeah. changed their mind real quick when, the, you know, the tag team titles got involved. Yep. Yep. And so, uh, the next match, we had Chris Atkins right. versus Mojo Riley. Now, um, you know, when this match, this, this match is pretty much, this match was great. Match. It, this wasn't even a match, to be honest. As soon as the match started, you know, Samoa Joe came out. He just started beating the crap out of both of them. He started he, he started beating up Chris Atkins, threw him out the ring, started beating up Mojo Raleigh, threw him out the ring. He was pretty much trying to show uh, what he was going to do to Shinsuke, and he was trying to prove to Regal that, you know, he can he should be able to do whatever he wants and choose who, who, who he should face, and whatever opponent Regal puts in his way, he's going to take him down. But um, while, while Samoa Joe was talking or whatever, 
Um, Mojo Raleigh came back and started beating him up and stuff. He he had him down on the mat, and then the referees tried to hold him back. That makes sense. <laughs> the referee. Yeah. The refs tried to hold Mojo back, and as soon as Mojo was leaving, Samoa Joe ran right after him and just beat the crap out of him, and he choked him out. And he said, Shin, this is you, Shin, this is you, Shinsuke. This is you, uh, Shinsuke. That man passed on out. He was. He said, I'll do it to you too, Regal. I'll do the same thing to you. Hey, man, Samoa Joe, that man, he trying to get intense before that match against Shinsuke. No, that's that's how you lose your job. Nah, that's how you be a heel. <laughs> that's how you be a heel. Hey, man. No, no. Hey, okay, tell me, who do you think is a better heel, Samoa Joe or Chris Jericho? Ah, I, I, oh, that's a hard one. Like, uh, charismatically, I'll have to go with Jericho, but as far as, you know, kicking ass oh, yeah. and all, overall, but Samoa Joe, definitely. But, but we're we talking about mic skills and being charismatic. Oh, yeah, that's Jericho all day. That's a mic king right there. Uh, Joe yeah. ain't bad on the mic as well, but when it comes to dominating <laughs> and all, eh, he, yeah. Like, before CM Punk, you know, finally dropped that pipe bomb, I used to think that uh, the person in professional wrestling that had the mic skills was either The Miz or Jericho. I couldn't really choose between Miz or Jericho. I'm not going to lie. The, the, the I, I'll give Miz credit. I think the only reason why he got to the top in 2011 was because of his mic skills. He He got some really good mic skills. That, that's what helped him out a lot. Because, I mean, I, the, that man's biggest heel moment was when him and our true team dealt, and they were causing hell. They they were causing hell oh, yeah. on WWE. I swear, they were attacking the CEO and everything. I remember at one point uh, <laughs> when Alex Rollins and the Miz, they, they got into a little fight with Stone Cold, and Stone Cold whooped their ass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, was like, he, he was like, you got that's one more heel. you got one more match in your Stone Cold? But you know, we ain't seeing Stone Cold compete. Hell no, that man gonna break that neck again. But anyway, um, Hulk Hogan gave his comments. Comment, comment over time over there. That don't make no sense. But um, anyway, moving on. The next match we had Oscar versus Aaliyah. Now before, like before this match happened, Oscar and Bailey had a little promo backstage. Bailey was talking about uh, you know, she was pretty much giving the people an update on you know, and how, and she was pretty much uh, talking about how she wanted um, but she was talking about losing the women's championship and trying not to let. That L happened again, and then Oscar was like, you know, no, no, no. Bailey said she was able to adapt and think mentally, think better uh, about her opponent and all. And then Oscar came up, she showed up, she was like, Bailey, you need to watch my match, cause you know, I, I, you gonna see what's gonna happen <laughs> when we fight. And and then when Oscar came out, uh, yeah. Bailey was on commentary, and when Oscar came out, she had a chair, she put it right in front of the ring, and she looked at Bailey, she said, bring that ass here, and the crowd was like, ooh. She didn't really say bring that ass here, but it was. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, I, I, tr I didn't even know that Oscar was a. I didn't even know that Oscar was a. Heel. I was, she, I, she's she's not really heel. She's kind of uh, she's face. I wouldn't call her. I wouldn't consider her a heel, to be honest. She got that hit. She, she at, the, at okay after what happened, you might could call her a heel. You know, after what happened, she you know she held that move on longer, but she kind of been doing that yeah. already, and the fans been just cheering her. I mean, but yeah, like okay, this is kind of like one of those situations with the, uh, let's see, Rock versus Cena, right? And the Rock versus Cena match, everyone will consider Cena the heel yeah. and Rock face. You know what I mean? Because everyone likes the Neutral, Rock pretty more much. Than Cena. That's what Oscar should be. I mean, in this situation, in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, you know, she's Roman so, Reigns. Yeah, the difference between them is you know Roman put niggas to sleep. But um, anyway, back to uh, you know, back to Oscar versus Aaliyah. <laughs> now um. <clears throat> Make sure you check out me and A Sones, you know, Roman oh, yeah. Reigns remixes, by the way. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe on those. And, uh, just make sure you follow. You know, like, before you watch it, make sure you Yep, because it's going to put you to sleep. It will shock you. Going yeah, into but, this uh, match, man, uh, Oscar <clears throat> pretty much kicked that ass. Ali Aaliyah got dominated. <laughs> And then Bailey, like she, like when Bailey walked to the to the chair, she was like, "Hell no, I don't need this chair." She she put the chair together and threw it back down, and you know she folded her arms, just watching. She was like, "I don't need to sit. I don't need to sit. I don't, I don't need to sit down because you want me to." And so she just stood up, and then Oscar, she just pretty much dominated Aaliyah. She was giving her kicks. Aaliyah got to the top of the turnbuckle at one point. She jumped off. Got, she got caught with a kick, and then you know uh, eventually Oscar gave her that uh, that Tajiri like kick, and then she put her she put Aaliyah in the Oscar hold, and that was game. She was that was. That was torture. Oh uh, yeah, she, she she kept on yeah, doing she got the kicks. And then the thing is, attacked. when she she held the uh, the submission on longer than usual, and Bailey came in the ring, she was like, "Let her go." The, the bell rung, "Let her go." And Bailey was like, "Why'd you do that?" And Oscar, I don't know what she said. She, was like, I don't know what she said, but 
you know, she looked at she looked at uh Bailey like, why the hell you care? And pretty much um, you know, Bailey tried to you know make sure Leah was okay. And, and Oscar, she left. You know, she just walked out the ring. And that match was like four minutes, according to Lords of Pain. Pretty short match. Like um. Uh... Pretty much, I guess what makes this uh, NXT different from the rest is every single match, like, every single match, but one match that was the main event. But every single match either ended in domination by one superstar, or it was um either it was domination or the match didn't start at all. You know, it was someone got attacked before yep. the match even started. So, but um, uh, moving on, they showed a recap of uh, One Larkin. L- Lorkin, I don't know if I said his name right. If y'all don't know who that guy is, he beat Ty Dillinger. Um, that was an upset victory. That was a surprising victory right there. He did that running neck breaker. They pretty much showed it, the recap of that, you know, that, that W he took. And uh, what the hell happened to Ty Dillinger? I, I haven't seen him in a minute. I don't know if he was on NXT last week or not, but it seemed like, you know, he ain't really been doing much ever since that L he took or whatever. He needs to turn heel. That's what I think. But, um... He One got interviewed backstage by uh you know the interviewer. And he was pretty much saying you know this time now that he's you know now that he's on NXT he got to step it up. He got to go he got to go into his roots. He got to go back into his roots. You know be 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 his best and yep that was pretty much it. That was a little short promo. Yep. And then uh, after that uh, apparently a new NXT diva. Oh yeah, her name is a uh, woman is coming. Her, her name is Athena. Uh, I'm not sure what I forgot what her uh, NXT name is. Something Moon. Something Moon, but her, her her name is Athena. She's actually African American. She's an African American diva. I wanted I wanted to say yeah. Emma. Yeah, it's something Emma Moon. Moon. I forgot what it was, Moon but her 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 other wrestling name is Athena, and she's from the debut. She was on NXT before, I think, back then. But they're pretty much repackaging her and giving her this new gimmick or whatever. But um, you know, I looked her up a bit. You know, she's from Texas. She was trained by Booker T. She's African American. Um, I don't know what she did in the, on the uh, independent scene, but hopefully, you know, we'll see what she does on August 20th when she debuts. Basically, she's the new Alicia Fox. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I don't even know because I've never seen the first one before, but, yeah. She was trained She was trained by Booker well, T. I know Alicia Fox was trained by Booker Fox. T, really? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah, now I'm thinking about it, I, I can see that. I can picture that now because they do do some yeah. similar stuff. With them kicks, like you, you don't like. You, haven't you noticed that Alicia Fox? Up. You know, yeah, I, I, that, didn't, I, uh, yeah, I didn't think she was kick. trained by Booker yeah, T. You know, yeah. Our troop, he he sees it at the axe kick, but you know. Oh uh, yeah, but you know, uh, she, they got some of the moves sets. Yeah, Booker T. Yeah, Booker T. Uh, I said they got some of the moves sets. Alicia oh, Booker T. I see it now. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yo, uh, that, that's fact. Oh, wow. That's actually real. That's a real thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, Booker T. But, chose her, but uh. Moving on, but, uh, the glorious Bobby Roode finally made his televised debut on NXT. That way he came out. Man, shoot. Go ahead. <laughs> man. <laughs> when I first saw this, man, when I when, like, when he first started talking. Yeah, same here. I, I thought, thought it was face. face. I truly thought he, he was he, talking about, uh, uh, he was talking about how he came here when he first, when he was here that weekend, well, that, the weekend they had that NXT event before WrestleMania or some shit like that. Um, he looked around, he saw the 10,000 fans, and um, he was like, this is where I need to be. We are NXT. Bobby Roode is NXT. He was, you know, pretty much trying to make his mark or whatever. And then he started talking about, uh, you know, he want, uh, he see he see, he see, uh, he see a lot of successful things or some shit like that. He was referring to the crowd. He said, in the crowd, I want to see, uh, I, I want to see presidents. I, wanna, I, I can see you guys being future secretaries, being future this, lawyers, all of that. And I'm, I'm not talking about the guys who chant the stupid stuff, the people that dread the fat, not Phoenix, say fat, but he see, he was pretty much talking crap about the people that chant the wrong things. Wait. He was just like, uh, he, yeah, and, 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 and he, he was pretty much referring he, like, to the crowd, <laughs> the crowd, the crowd that was actually there. And the average, well, the typical crowd, a chance, anything they want to chant. But um, uh, pretty really, this all went down here. He was just talking about how he was gonna make NXT great. You know, he was basically, you know, make Darren Young straight again and so you know, put NXT in there. And uh, he he said he he's gonna make uh, NXT great. He he said why he was here. He's gonna do everything he could for NXT. And then that's when you know it's it's it all went down here when he was just like. He was just like, I want to see presidents. I don't want to see you stupid people. 
Oh, you dumb people. I was like, oh, oh, okay, yo. And that's when he, he, wait, like, when he called the people stupid. Oh, yeah. That's when people just start booing him out of nowhere. They, were, they went from cheering him to just, like, he said stupid people. Be, he, he's he's going to be a really good heel. Yeah, I hope insane. they keep him heel. And as um, soon as, you know, he said, Bobby Roode, he said, I, I, he wants to make, N he said, I want to make NXT glorious. And then Corey Graves was like, hallelujah. <laughs> glorious. Oh. Yeah. But, um, yep, that was Bobby Roode's. Yeah. yeah, it was a pretty good thing. Nice theme song, by the way. Yeah. Nice theme song. Y'all need to check that out. Make sure you go to, you know, iTunes, check that out. Probably you can get the song for nine, you know, nine. Oh, you can find it. Oh, you can find it on YouTube and you know, just get it for free. Sure. You can convert that thing on YouTube to mp3.com. There you yeah. go. <laughs> but um, anyway, let's get into the main event. We had the revival versus TM61, and it, this was a pretty decent match. Um, you know, the match was like seven minutes. I didn't realize that until I looked at this website. It's, it the match was seven minutes. Now we saw signature moves from TM61, like they do that moon salt and that fish drop. I love that move. That's a pretty dope move. But um, at the end, you know, the rival caught him. You know, they, they one of them came back in the ring, and then the bald guy from the rival caught him with that DDT, and that was it. That man DDT the shit out of him. But the match was pretty much back and forth. But uh, the revival won, Damn. which was pretty obvious. They wasn't you know, gonna, they wasn't going to let TM61 win. TM61 win. But um, after this match, uh, Gorgano and what's his name? Ah, Ciampa, Ciampa, whatever his last, I can't pronounce his name, but it, Johnny and his partner, they came out, and uh, they confronted the Revival, and um, they was pretty much making fun of, you know, their style and how they looked, they they compared them to the Hollywood Blondes, Kermit and Miss Piggy, Pikachu and uh, Charmander, and um, the crowd, after that, when they compared them to Pikachu and Charmander, the crowd was just chanting Pokemon, Pokemon, and, you know, cause Pokemon Go Train, that, that thing got crazy, not, you know, that, I I'm not surprised they mentioned that Pokemon plug. But um anyway, you know, Gorgondo and Ciampa made, they made their they made yeah, they got inside the ring and um they were just talking about wanting something and then they, no they was talking about collecting Pokeballs and he was like the thing I want to collect is those NXT championships. That's what I want to collect. And then um Gorgondo was like drop all the names. You want you want drop he said drop all the names you want, but everyone knows you haven't dropped us yet. That's what uh, yeah, that's what they said and then you know and eventually they got into a brawl or whatever, and um, they hit their freaking tag team finisher. It was like the super kick and the running knee on one of the revival members, and uh, you know they rolled. They gave him like a fake roll up pin, and uh, Gorgondo rolled up. He rolled up Wilder, and then Ciampa counted one, two, three. Uh, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was just pretty much giving the example of what's gonna happen in the future. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I could picture these guys becoming champion. Like at first, when they first uh, came, they didn't they didn't speak much. But I like that they're talking a lot now. They seem very charismatic. I like that about them. They're trying to you know make the crowd laugh or whatever. Be some be a good face, you know, a charismatic face. That's what I like. And um, that was NXT. So Dragon, out of five, what do you rate this show? And I give it a three out of five. I give it a three out of five. But um, that was the next T. Now next week, uh, what's going on next week? Not sure what's going on next week. So I think I think that's gonna be like a tag team match between uh one of the one of the teams or whatever. But something's going on next week. But if y'all want to know, just you know, go on WWE dot com or whatever. Uh -oh. Next week, yeah, make sure you go on WWE dot com. Check that out. Uh, next week we're also gonna have a contract yeah. signed between Oscar and Bailey, so make, yeah. you guys make sure you check that out for you know takeover. And uh, that's you know, about yeah. it. Well, hey, Jack got some messages. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, before we you know get off yesterday, and, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get off. So Jake here, this is not about the pot. Yesterday I put up a video about you know WWE 2K games you know whatever I put up a video about it and uh, I just want to make some you know things clear uh, we all feel different ways about things it, it, it's my job as a YouTuber and as you know for me doing things over 2K it's my job not to tell people what they want to hear but it's my job to tell people the truth yesterday I was just I was just clearly just telling the truth i was telling the truth about 2k's crap i was telling the truth about how trash that game is i was telling the truth about how i threw it in the trash uh I, there were some people that didn't like it some people that didn't agree with me like i said man if you want to be 12 years old 
and you want to agree, you know, with something that's not a good game. Hey, man, some people like glitchy games, man. You know, some people like bad glitch pin bars. Some people like just crap. You know, some people like bad servers. If you like, man, if you like crap, man, go ahead and buy the game, man. Like, seriously, I truly have, I mean, I'm not telling you, you know, not to buy the game. I just say, if you have any doubt, I would prefer you not to. And uh, so j just, I just want to get that clear. Um, without any you know problems without any situations because i felt like some people you know got my you know some misunderstandings uh somebody commented i forgot what his name was he was just like what are you talking about 2k games are all uh, you know awesome uh you know quickly I automatically assumed that this kid must be like 12 i don't know but the, the point of the video yesterday guys it's just I'm just tired of the bull crap I'm, I'm tired of you know 2k never getting better and I'm, I'm just I'm tired of the fact that they don't update their games. They don't do anything to their game. Hey, so how many updates did we have on, uh, you see. know, WWE uh, this year? Overall, that I think the game only had two or three updates. It was like two or three. Just two or three. Something like that. Exactly. It, but NBA is getting updates every two weeks. Sometimes every week. It, it, and they're always making NBA better. They're always doing something to make the game better. But yet, WWE game, WWE fans don't get what they deserve. So, like I said, if you guys feel like I offended you yesterday with that video, I'm sorry. But, like I said, it's not my job to tell you, you know, it's not my job to lie to you and make you happy with something that's not true. It's my job to tell you the truth so you know what to buy, you know, how good the game is to buy. And like I said, you might like, you know, stuff like that. You might like games like 15, <clears throat> low-key worst game ever. But... Hey, that's you. You know, like I said, we all feel different, you know, in different ways. So, yep. And uh, I'm done. Up, guys. Bada bing, bada boom. Who's the finest guy? Oh, God damn. Hey, sorry, One more time. Doing? Put a smile on that face, God damn it. Bada bing, bada boom. Who is the finest? My penis. On how you doing?